Hello everybody and welcome back to Fast Expand. We have some amazing best of threes coming up for you. First best of three coming up is Fluid Color versus GG Drawler. Chris, how are you feeling, man? I'm feeling good, man. My webcam is gone, so hopefully my voice will be fine. And I'm excited. I want the obviously I'm gonna leave my bias at home during the cast, but I really want to prove Moomin wrong. <laughs> yeah, Moomin already cheering for a colour in this one. So uh, shall we get this game started? We shall get it started. Literally as soon as possible. Both players are currently readying up, asking us if we are ready in the gladiator style. Do you have a good John so, Anderson impression? Gladiators ready! Oh, that's way better than mine, so that'll be. <laughs> Casters ready! You know I've met him. He's a really nice guy. Oh my god, I am so jealous. Yeah, he was, on, he was actually on the board of directors for my school. That is amazing! Yeah, he, he come in and we done like a, a business presentation for him for our business like A-level and uh, yeah, really, really nice guy. <laughs> Were you on a timer? Um, yes. <laughs> Your time runs out in three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one, and we are on GSL Metropolis. <laughs> I need a whistle. Oh man, we need to get him on for a cast. I need to get some contacts in. <laughs> yeah, we need. He needs to be a StarCraft caster. That would be amazing. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We are just waiting for both players to load in, and as we have said, it is fluid color as the. Oh, we were obviously uh, said the color, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> almost did intros very early there. That'd be our quickest <laughs> intro ever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We are waiting for the players to load here on the GSL Metropolis, and here we go. Spawning in the top right hand corner as the orange Protoss playing for Team GG, we have Droller. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner of the GSL Metropolis playing for Team Fluid, we have Color. Now, obviously, both players being fairly regular to us by now, we cast them a lot in the WCS, we cast them a lot in the ESLs, we cast them a lot on Fast Expand. Uh, would you like to give us some background information on both players? Yeah, absolutely. Fluid Colour is definitely incredibly high level when it comes to UK Zerg, which is at a very high level anyway. Like I'd say, out of all the UK races, Zerg is probably the highest level at the moment, excluding a couple breakouts like Bling and Muslim, etc. But Colour at the moment seems to be its struggling in his ZBZ. Now, I may be mistaken, that might be because he goes up against his teammate Telef a surprising amount, and it, Telef's ZBZ is stellar. Yeah, so that is really, really usually, good. Yeah, that is usually when Colour goes out. But Colour is definitely extremely high level, very good player for Fluid, and is posting quite a few results in almost every match he plays. Droller, on the other hand, is someone who has been in the GG Academy for a while now. And he started breaking out a couple months ago, where he came to the semi-finals in a World Championship qualifier. So obviously he got first seed for the next qualifier. Unfortunately, he went out in that, but ever since then, he's been doing really, really well in qualifiers. Like, most recently going out to Demon, who won the final qualifier. So Droller very unlucky for not qualifying himself, but is still proving to be an extremely powerful player lately. He's improved a huge amount since he first joined GG. Yeah, definitely. And we are seeing a little bit of a pylon block. Not letting that pylon finish, so he, he oh he just gets that hatch down, so that's really good for fluid colour right now, having no delay in his hatchery. So uh Really, um, I love when I, I, I manage to pull that off as a Zerg player. It's frustrating being a Protoss player and that happening. But uh, I love when I kind of do that little hatch, uh, you know, micro back and forth and uh, manage to finally get that hatchery down on time. It's always a nice feeling. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing more satisfying than just seeing the drone bounce off the edge of your hatchery. Just like, <laughs> shit, I missed. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing more infuriating when you miss micro and that hatchery doesn't go down on time. So oh, we are yeah. seeing a... <laughs> full wall off right now from GG Droller, so that's really good. He does manage to sneak another probe out, and there is one still remaining by the kind of fourth base of colour. Um, I'm expecting to see both of these probes come into play very, very soon. Indeed, they've definitely like, rallied to very sneaky areas, so 
could be some cheese coming. We could be seeing some forward pylons going down. These probes are definitely big indicators that that could be coming, possibly double Zeta attacks from both sides. This Overlord may scout that out, though, so Color may be able to predict, predict and defend against this. Yeah, um, so far so standard, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, been pretty obvious what's going on, and for some reason, uh, Color is scouting the complete left-hand side. Maybe Proxy Stargate he's looking for? Maybe. That would be a pretty fair scout if he could get it. And But yeah, as you said, this is fairly standard play forge fast expand into triple expand out of the zerg yeah uh i'm guessing we're gonna see roaches to be honest i mean a big map favors the roaches obviously because you can macro up to 200 200 fairly easily off free to slash uh, three slash four base and obviously the protoss can take a fairly early third so you might want to kill them early with this roach attack so yeah probably gonna see roaches uh that'd be my prediction for this matchup anyway <laughs> i would probably predict that is fairly accurate. Metropolis being one of the few bases that you can wall off completely and still safely take a third So as Protoss. So killing them early with roaches is definitely a really good move for a Zerg player, which is why this 200-200 roach max is so favoured, basically. I mean, yeah, it's one of those builds where you can almost do it blindly. Like, I don't want to say that because... You can almost do it blindly. I mean, you can adapt that build to work with any sort of opener the Protoss does, and we do see a robotic facilities coming down. So it is going to be probably Sentry Immortal versus Roaches that we're going to see. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying about the 200, uh, 200 Roach push, you can kind of adapt it. If they go DTs and you put down some Spore Crawlers, you've got the Lair in time. If they put down a Stargate, you can put down some Spore Crawlers. And then, you know, add some Infestors, Corruptors, whatever. So you can kind of adapt this build very, very le easily. And you can open with it almost blindly. Um, so yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a great build. It's very well optimized. And it's what Zergs do now. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Indeed. It's pretty much the meta game nowadays when playing against Protoss. If they forge fast expand, free base roaches. Because you know... Because basically, it is the meta game at the moment. Because they know what you're going to do. They know you're going to go roaches. You know they're going to go the build to defend against roaches, so you know you have enough time to get roaches. Yeah, exactly. And we are seeing the four gas coming now. We are seeing immortals being pumped out. So it is looking like this sentry immortal push, which is very, very deadly. Indeed. It's five gates down for Drollet, so... 5-gate sentry or just 5-gate zealots, etc. Just anything you can get out, really, at uh, this situation. When your opponent is going that many roaches, it's definitely a situation of, holy shit, how much stuff can I get out before it's time for the engagement? Exactly. Um, the Zag player playing a little bit greedy now, going all the way up to 80 drones. Um, still no fourth like base slash macro hatch coming down. The layer almost finished a little bit late as well. So far, only a few roaches. Pro uh, sorry, no roaches produced. Uh, a couple are on the way now. Is this a little bit risky? I think it is a bit risky. He's droning up, and as you said, he doesn't really have any kind of army out at the moment. So obviously, he is going to have the economy to make the army when Droller comes. But if he isn't starting to produce units too early, like he is starting to produce units now, so that's probably about a good time. But if he'd waited a bit longer, he may not have actually had enough quick enough. No, definitely not. We just see two more gateways finishing, bringing Drolla up to a count of, uh, that'd be seven, wouldn't it? Four, five, yes, six, it's seven. Yes, seven gate robo, and we are seeing that warp prism in with two or more portals, which becomes so, so popular throughout the UK scene. Yeah, we are seeing so... these, sorry, we are seeing these proxy pylons on the left-hand side being caught out here, but there is a zealot going to defend this one at the top. But of course, he does not need those proxy pylons, as he does have the warp prism ready. Yeah, absolutely. The best thing about a warp prism is you don't need pylons out on the map that can be picked off or and slow down the attack. Because you can simply transform the warp prism and warp in anywhere you like. Mm -hmm. And Scarlet has morphed an overseer in the bottom of Droller's base, so he will fly that into Scout. But at the moment, he does see this army moving out across the map with this Zergling on the Zelnaga Tower. Droller will turn the Zelnaga Tower and see this. And pretty good force fields there from Droller catching out three roaches. 
Very good engagement there. Yeah, definitely. But for some reason, you only made two immortals. Uh, very, very confusing there, as you usually see, like, maybe three, uh, four at the very top, I suppose. But two is a little bit fragile because these are the, you know, these are the power punches of this army, is the immortals. Indeed, Drawler seems to be Great relying on... Yeah, really good force fields there. Drawler seems to be re relying on his micro and his force fields. Oh my god, those roaches are not going anywhere. More good force fields. Drawler's doing a really good job, and exactly what I just said there. He's relying on his micro rather than the power of immortals just to get more units rather than the more powerful units that can be picked off. And it seems to be working. Bit of a missed force field there. He's starting to run low on energy on those sentries. I'd like to see him warp in a few more from this warp prism. Let's see if he does, but... He's still managing to hold colour off, and he's still warping in uh, more stalkers by the looks of it in the front. Yeah, but stalkers he's... do do that bonus damage to armoured, which is gonna help. Yeah, but he's almost out of force fields now, and once these force fields go, this 200, 200 roach army will be able to surround. But some more great force fields there, cutting off all the roach army, and is making his way into the natural now, which will really, really help him because color will not be able to reinforce. But you just see this massive roach army coming into the back. More great force fields now, filtering these roaches out. 90% of these roaches cannot deal damage right now, and they're being forced into this tiny little funnel. Droll are doing such a good job right now. Absolutely, Droller wasn't paying much attention to his warp prism there, but is now bringing it in from the back. And he sandwiched the Roach army, it does manage to slip out through that gap, but the Roach army has been obliterated right now, making Hydras to try and deal with this, try and snipe off some of the sentries, some of the immortals. And it's just not good enough at the moment, he's having to pull drones, manages to get a stalker, and the immortal is microing backwards. I think the other immortal has been picked off, if not, I can't find it. Not paying enough attention to his warp prism, and that goes down, cancelling the warp in of a couple of stalkers. But right now, the army of Droller is so scary, he's going to be able to kill this natural, and I think he's going to be able to kill the third as well, pulling all the drones from the third, and GG from Color. Yeah, a very, very quick, well, s straightforward game, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what happens in those situations. And as I said, I think the Hydras were a great idea, but too little too late, really. Hello everybody and we are back for this next game. I do hope you enjoyed the music, it is from the Bastion soundtrack. And uh, yeah, we're just about to jump into this next game. Uh, Chris, so far so good from Drawler? So far very good. Extremely impressed by the force fields there and extremely impressed by the strategy there from Drawler. Really getting one over on colour and it was a really great game to watch. Yeah, definitely. And uh, if you would like to uh, improve your strategy, then uh, tune in next week where I will be reviewing some replays and uh, giving you guys a little bit of coaching, a little bit of feedback, just to help improve your game. So there are going to be no show matches next week. Um, that We are going to stick to our usual kind of news uh, commentary, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but instead of the show matches, we are going to have replay analysis. So if you'd like your replays reviewed, please submit them to fastexpand at nordrasilradio.com. Nordrasilradio.com is obviously on the screen right now, and then just add the show title, fastexpand at nordrasilradio.com, along with free replays and your Skype name, and also what you would like to work on so we can review them next week. And uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> So just waiting for this next game to begin. Yep, absolutely. We are just currently waiting for the players and the casters to ready up. We are on GSL Daybreak, the in brackets official version. The official, as, as opposed to the unofficial version, which has uh, gun crime and drugs and <laughs> pirating. It's got sequins on it. Yeah. It's pretty, but not really very official. Uh, I don't know, like... You know, sometimes these unofficial <laughs> ones are a lot better. Yeah, you can say that, but then again, sometimes the unofficial ones have rocks blocking your main. Cough, cough. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are seeing both players spawn on the same map, thankfully, and that map is Daybreak. And now Daybreak is one of these new maps that has been added recently. It was added in Season 7. It's, a very, it's considered one of the most balanced two-player maps in the map pool right now. Uh, I don't know a single person that doesn't like playing on it. So hopefully these two players do enjoy playing on it. <laughs> yep, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't met anyone who doesn't like it either. 
There's bound to be like complaints about it somewhere, oh, yeah, but of course, yeah. you get that about everything. Oh, it's too round. It has corners. I don't like the colour. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I'd I'd uh, really like to do the intros. So spawning as the orange Protoss in the top right hand corner of Daybreak, we do have Drolla, who is currently one zero up against his rival today, spawning as the very very red it is very red today very red zerg fluid color now both players showing very very high skill last game to be perfectly honest and uh yeah looking forward to second game to be perfectly honest with you yeah absolutely the last game was very stellar from both players bit of a mistake from color not building units early enough but overall, an incredible game. Drolla worried about him possibly blocking his own Nexus with his pylon. It doesn't look like it from here to me, but I guess we'll find out in a second. No, um, well, I hope not. I mean, that's, uh, that's a shame Awkward. if that has happened. <laughs> but uh, Colour oh. being a gentleman and saying they can restart if he has blocked his Nexus because, you know, it doesn't really change anything. No, absolutely. I'm just waiting for him to get up to that 400 minerals, and we will find out whether that is the case. However, if we have a look at in the natural of color, Drolla has once again thrown down a pylon block and is sending his probe up to the third base to see if it needed to block there. Doesn't look like it will, though, because pylon did not finish. But now that probe is there is in a, a Pac-Man shape. It was a Pac-Man, I'm <laughs> uh, pretty sure. But, ah, oh, too wide. The, ne the hatchery does go down, and that probe will get out of there. Yeah, thankfully the Nexus does go down as well, so uh, we will not need a restart. <laughs> yep, that is very close. That is a very tight fit, but if it fits, I sit. Yeah, exactly. As the Nexus says. <laughs> and uh, we do see fallings now out on the map they are going to just make sure there's no cannons going up at that third and this one lone ling is running to take watchtower control as well so some great play here by color just making sure that he isn't going to get cheese that third base is going to go down fairly easily and uh, securing himself some map control as well absolutely almost sandwiched that drone but unfortunately the lings all just ran past it eventually so this probe is eventually going to die but it will give those links a bit of a run around first and of course that gives Drolla enough time to finish off his lovely Forge Fast Expand. Yeah exactly and uh, so far uh, the gateway hasn't been completed we're just waiting for this gateway to be done so we can throw down the cyber core and then we'll be able to see the tech choice that, uh, that Drolla has gone with. Do you suspect maybe a Century Immortal push again since it worked just so very well for him last game? I don't think it's a deal of it working so well last game as to the fact that it is really the meta game at the moment because it's so common for a Zerg player to go roaches these days it's almost hard for a Protoss to justify not doing that build. Yeah, it's, it kind of counts as a roaches especially if the Zerg is a little bit greedy which we did see colour being last game usually you meant to stick around 60, 65 drones and then produce roach lane kind of and that, that will secure you against the Sentry Immortal but Color being fairly greedy and Drolla just making sure that he's punished for that. Those those force fields were absolutely amazing. Absolutely perfect force fields. Absolutely. He just kept that under control. Really good micro. Like we honestly thought he would need more immortals or more sentries. But he kept it very much under control, purely warping in stalkers and eventually that firepower he was able to whittle down the roaches enough so that his stalker firepower was just way too overwhelming. Yeah, I just. It was strange to see only two immortals, but I suppose he skipped the third one to get that warp prism, which ended up helping him more than that extra immortal probably would have. Absolutely. Warp prism is definitely coming into the metagame, I would say. It's being used so often by Zerg players now, because it's just so useful when it comes to not having to throw down four pylons, because every single time you throw down a four pylon, that's 100 minerals. Yeah, Every time exactly. it goes down and you need to refro one down, it's another 100 minerals. The warp prism, if it's shot at, it can fly away. And that's 200 minerals that, will, if you're good with your micro and pay attention to it, it will be there permanently. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just a, a good decision from Drala, really, and uh, making that game count. Um, right now, though, Color has scouted the double gas 
and the natural, and he has scouted the robotics facility, so Color actually knows exactly what is happening, and to be honest, it looks like that Century Immortal push yet again. Uh, will Color be able to hold it off this time, do you think? I think he might. I think he's going to know to start producing units more quickly this time. That or he is taking up to something else. We don't know. He may actually try a different build to just catch Droller off guard, but we have no idea. But once again, Droller doing almost exactly the same thing, except he does have one less gateway than last time. Whether that uh, it, it was a mistake, <laughs> there we go. Oh, two. So we are up to, yeah, we're up to six gateways instead of seven on this map. So whether that means the Droller will be getting something else out instead, maybe? Uh, maybe he'll he seems to get go another observer remote. first this time as well. Um, a little bit of a uh, little bit different. Uh, probably just scouting because he knows that Color knows exactly what's going on, so he's probably making sure that he's not going muta. Uh, would be my guess for that observer first this time. Uh, maybe just a little bit paranoid this time. <laughs> maybe. So we will find out very soon as the... Observer is now finished up and has shuffled its way all the way across the map and is currently in Colour's third. We'll have a big scout around. There is no uh, detection for Colour at the moment, so that Observer is going to be able to chill, see everything at once, see them. it will see the macro hatch going down, and if Droller obviously clicks on the units, he will see the upgrade count is currently 0-0. Zero, zero. But if he keeps his eye on it, he will notice that the plus one attack will finish up fairly soon. Yeah, and Color now being a lot less greedy. As I mentioned the last game, he is sticking around 64 drones right now and producing these roaches of four hatcheries, which is the optimal thing to do. I mean, he got caught with his pants down a little bit last game by Drolla um, and just allowing... Because he, he played really greedy, those 20 extra drones could have been 40 lings, they could have been 20 extra roaches. That would have made all the difference, really. Yeah, absolutely. And it does look like Droller is expanding instead of going for the push this game. But good force fields there from Droller. Manages to catch out a couple, but the rest do manage to squeeze through tiny little gaps, breathe out as far as they can, and do manage to escape. And it does look like Droller securing his front as well, throwing down two extra cannons to help defend against this fairly sizable Roach Ling push that is currently heading towards his base. But... As we can see, he is trying to get down his bird, warping in lots of stalkers there as well to help defend. So if these roaches go in the front, they are going to be met by a lot of cannons, as this overseer does see, and maybe sandwiched by this fairly decent army that Droller has. Yeah, and now Ling's coming in to the third. They are going to force a cancel, and uh, that base gets cancelled very quickly. Roaches making their way up to the natural, but there are three cannons there, and a couple of sentries and an immortal, so these roaches aren't going to do much. Sniping a sentry there, and... Uh, yeah, it didn't really stand much of a chance. A good multi-prong attack there from Color, just doing a little bit of prodding and keeping Droller on his toes. Absolutely. Droller throwing down a force field on the forge just in case it did go down, but Color instead pulling back, did manage obviously to bait out that force field, but still very safe play here from Droller. But here we go, Color just doing the exact Zerg thing and Zerg needs to do and just trying to be everywhere at once, trying to break down this wall. And he is going to go for this gate. Sorry, hiccups. He's going to go for this gateway wall here of Droller and will probably pick off a gateway, but he's taking a lot of cannon fire right now. Yeah, that's a very, very secure wall. Uh, gateways being able to block the um, roaches from clumping up too much and uh, these cannons just taking pot shots. We do see the army clashing at the natural as well, Ling's coming in, but these roaches are taking a lot of damage for little to no gain, really. I mean, he's just cancelling the buildings that they're firing on. Yeah, two gateways and one finished cannon is not very much for the amount of gas he just lost in roaches. Exactly. Uh, we are seeing a large Ling force here, but they are not going to be able to get in. Zealots completing this wall off, cannons firing sentries from the back. But we are seeing Color now go for a spire. Um, I don't know where that spire is, but it definitely just finished. There it is, by the natural. Um, so we are seeing him switch into Muto play, which is very, very clever, because he has spent a lot on Lings and uh, not a lot on Roaches, to be honest. Indeed, it's fairly ideal on this map as well where it's incredibly hard for a Protoss to get from their third if they have to defend all the way up to their main. So it's going to split Droller's army. He's going to have to start warping in Stalkers or start producing High Templar in his main base, whereas if he moves his whole army up there, then obviously Roaches are just going to kill everything else. Exactly. So it's a really good move at the moment. Uh, we are seeing the Overlord upgrades as well, the Carapace and the um, Cargo. So, you know, he is planning to Ling drop by the looks of it, but right now he's got to be careful that these uh, this army doesn't get caught and 
just misses those four field. That would have been so good for him right there. Absolutely. Drollet definitely playing defensive and hasn't lost that that much yet. He's defending really well, but Cullet is just continuing to pile the pressure on with these Lings and Roaches, keeping Drollet in his base. Drollet will see nothing of these muters until they are literally right on top of him. Yeah, I mean, that's the best way for muters to kind of happen is uh, stop him getting the advantage. But some Lings now squeezing past, but he's losing so much. And Lings is running into a wall of Stalkers, barely doing anything right now. But they are only minerals. Absolutely, Ling's incredibly cheap, but cheap as they are, that was a lot of Ling's and he killed one Stalker. So yeah. that's not that much gas. He did, however, kill quite a few gateways and a lot of cannons. So the mineral loss for Droll for those two would be fairly e even, but I would say Colour lost a bit more. But Colour is ahead in bases, so we can afford it. And you are absolutely right earlier. It does look like Colour is going for Roach Drops up in the main base. There are Stalkers there already. While the Muters look like they're going to attempt to break the third again, but the Stalkers are still there, the main Stalker army. So it's just about how many units Droller can warp into this main base, whether he begins to warp in. Oh, he's just he's walked into the main it. base, he sees everything, and there we go. He's going to be able to fix off one Overlord. Gets the second, the Muters are in there as well. Everything is in there. This is a very dangerous situation for Droller now. He's going to have to move back, and that choke on his natural is so small. He's not going to be able to get in there. He's going to have to blink have his blink units though. that he does have. The rest of them will have to chill outside and help defend against roaches and go, Droller. He's going to have to help defend against these muters because his mineral line is just being gutted right now. Muters getting on out of there. Those roaches Another will die. Another drop at the third here. That's a very, very good play. No cannons defending. He is warping in a line of zealots. He has pushed the muters back at his main, but these lings have done incredible damage over... 40 workers killed this game now from uh, Fluid Color there. Absolutely, and there was a Ling attack at the front as well. It ran into a massive wall of units and got obliterated, but it kept his army there while the Lings at the third were able to do harass. And here we go, massive Ling Muta Force. Great force fields there by Droller. But now he has so little anti-air at this third base that all these immortals, all these sentries will go down. And that's a lot of gas loss for Droller. And everything just being gutted. At the cost of very few muters there. Yeah, Fluid Color doing a great job of keeping on the pressure. He is actually sitting at 78 drones, while unfortunately Droller is sat at 40 because of that massive amount killed. He's being forced all in here by the looks of it, but this Ling Muter Force now making his way into the natural. A great force field pushing them back, but how long can this hold up? We will see, and it looks like Droller attempting to catch that army out of position, do some damage before he goes for the kill, if he indeed does decide that now is the time to move out, and now would be a good time to move out. We're seeing Color throwing down spying crawlers. He knows that this is one of Droller's only options, really. So we'll have to see if Color's able to defend this. There we go. Droller moving out across the map with what he has. It's not that much Stalkers, Immortals with low health, but the shields are still up. And two sentries, whereas the Muters are now in the main base. Fighting a fairly sizable Stalker army, but there's not enough Stalkers here having to walk in more on the low ground. And the Nexus goes down, but now the Stalkers are just being obliterated. More coming in from the low ground. A moves his own pylon there, does a bit of damage to that. Oh, wow, you're going to want to watch this, Chris, at the third oh base my God. of color. The Banelings are coming in. Good force field stopping them, but they're running round. They're running round. Oh, and oh get my God. Good backwards, but there's not enough. Everything oh. dies. GG. What a way to end it. God, was that a lot of Banelings. That was 50 Banelings. Banelings are the best thing ever. That's all I can <laughs> say. Wow, and we are seeing this game now tied for this best of three. Um, GG Droller versus Fluid Color looking to be a very exciting match point game coming up just after this quick commercial and music break. So please stick around, guys, for game number three. This is proving to be very, very good indeed. And we are back for a very, very exciting game number three. Wow, was that game epic, that last game. <laughs> that was pretty epic. Definitely a great game to bring us back to this 1-1. One, one. So let's hope that this game can be of the caliber of the last two games we have seen. Both players have been outplaying each other so well. I think we're going to see a fairly even fight here. Yeah, um, Color just showing his multitasking dominance in that last game. I'd I, I don't like to say it, but I don't think Drawler can keep up with him. 
No, that's fair dues. It's very hard for a lot of Protoss players to keep, or even Terran players, to keep up when you're being attacked from so many different directions. So many different angles as well. I mean, you had the muters in yeah, the sky, exactly. you had the drops coming in, you had, you know, the Ling run bys at the third as well. Like, obviously, you know, Droll are doing really, really well to keep up, but eventually Color just won him over, basically. Yeah, pretty much constant attrition wins, and then. Roller may have been able to bring it back if he'd got good force fields down, been able to micro fairly well with that attack. But the Banelings just won that for colour. They came in so well and just annihilated everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, would you like to introduce the players? I would very much like to introduce the players. So, ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the top left-hand corner as the light blue Zerg playing for Team Fluid, we have colour. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner as the Red Protoss. Playing for Team GG, we have Droller. Now, both players showing us remarkable games so far. It, it seems like if Droller has control and his force fields are good, he's very, very good. And if Color has the ability to macro up, then it's very, very good for him. Like, you can see the two different styles and how they work against each other really well with these two players. It seems to be the out of these two players, whichever one is the aggressor, will seems to be the one that comes out on top. Where when Droller went out with his Sentry Immortal push, he came out on top in that engagement. Whereas when Color went out and did his constant harassment, it's a different style, but still aggression. He came out on top. Yeah, so it seems like whoever's uh, willing to what push the pedal first, basically, whoever's willing to put that. Uh... Put that fuel in first, and as we see, um, again, Droll are favouring to cancel that pile, and most Protoss was like, will actually let it finish. Um, yeah, I mean, it saves him, what, 100, well, 75 minerals, really, if he cancels yeah, absolutely. it? Absolutely, but he's thrown it down again, so that's mostly saving him, he's lost 50 minerals, so that is one probe less than he could. However, he has denied a lot of mining time here for colour. It's just a question of how much attention Droll is paying back at home as he is currently did was just floating 350 minerals yeah that's that's not great obviously being slightly distracted while trying to get this hatchery down and uh, on entombed it's actually quite difficult to take your third as your natural because you need to get a queen over there and it's quite a long distance so you really really want to kind of take your natural as your natural to get those timings lined up perfectly and this probe might just make it home and it does wow saved on 4 HP there Yep, saved by the cannon. If a Zergling came in and just had a couple nipples on it, as long as it could live the cannon, say if you sent two Zerglings, that probe would go down, but Color not willing to risk it. Yeah, most Protoss is now also um, using this probe to complete the wall in while they wait for the Zealot. And actually, most Protoss is completely skipping the Zealot in order to get that first sentry out, which is obviously a lot better to protect your wall against almost anything. Indeed. I'm not sure... Is that Cybercore walling off with uh, the yeah. forge, or is there a gap there? Uh, no, it is walling off. It's just strange to look at. Okay, fair enough, because I was about to say that looks like that he's just left two gaps in his wall off. But no, that is fine. And as we see, of course, Forge Fast Expand, what does the Zerg do? They make expansion. Well, I mean, you know, the general rule of thumb that pretty much any player will tell you is as a Zerg, you have to be one base ahead. So if the Protoss puts down a really fast nexus and you put down a really fast third and that's kind of what the meta game has evolved into and it's i mean you know forge fast expand as you said you can pretty much cast it blind the zerg is more than likely going to do the fast free bases and it works if it ain't broke don't fix it <laughs> yep absolutely as i think it was idra or naniwa said uh forge fast expand or die trying exactly well naniwa tends to nexus first or die trying <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That is very risky play, but he does seem to make it work, which, of course, all credits to him. But once again, we're seeing fairly standard builds out of both players. Once we start seeing Color getting more ready to produce roaches, we will see the gases go down on his natural and his third base. Yeah, very late gases, actually. Um, usually come down around six minutes. These are actually coming down at seven minutes. Uh, so maybe just a little bit distracted about what happened in the early game set him a few seconds behind but we do see Drolla going for that good old faithful robotics facility and uh, you know why not 
and there's extra gases coming down as well. Um, fluid color is again, once again, going to scout the robotics. He is going to scout the double gas, and on this map, you can easily secure your third with a mortal sentry. Uh, but you could also quite easily push out straight across the map as well. So we're going to have to wait and see what Droller is up for. But either options right now are viable. Indeed. Color definitely uh, going for roaches at the moment. Throwing down that roach warren. But I'm not so sure at the moment. He, As you said, he did throw down very late gas. Only just taking one of the gas on his natural. And when he starts producing roaches, he currently has 300 minerals and 100 gas. That's four roaches. He's definitely going to need to take a couple more gas if he wants to get enough roaches to really be a threat at the moment. Yeah, and right now, Droller is kind of making the complete anti-roach build. Roaches are very, very hard to use on this map because you have to fight up ramps if you want to attack the Protoss. And of course, a mortal sentry, if you're fighting them up a ramp, is very, very, very hard to kill. Absolutely, and... How many gateways has Drolla thrown down? Drolla has thrown down five more gateways, so that does bring him up to six gates, so we're seeing him favouring this build more. It does look like he's going to go take his third, so we're not seeing the Sentry Immortal push. It does look like he's going to go very similar to what he did last game and just take another expansion. And on this map, it is a lot easier, because it's much easier to defend a ramp with a very short distance to your natural than it is to defend a really long pathway to your natural where you're still on the wrong side of your wall off. Yeah, I think going for a quick third here is the absolute best choice. As I said before, it's very, very hard to engage a Protoss army up a ramp when they've got that advantage of force fields, sentries, and immortals. And of course, any whatever units they decide to, uh, you know, plug the rest of their gateway army with and of course you can just wall this off which it looks like he is going to do he's going to wall it off with uh, gateways and cannons so very very clever play here by Droller. Absolutely Nexus is getting blocked there by colors by one of colors links it is going down now but as we did predict and is fairly standard in this on this map Droller is throwing down that third base and color destroying the rock to his third base so Still seeing fairly standard play. Color has finally thrown down all the rest of his gas, so he is going to get the economy he needs if he wants to go with those roaches. And with the infestors now, the infestation pit down and getting that pathogen glands, he is going to finally start getting the income he needs. Yeah, definitely. And um, of course, uh, sorry, Droller is able to scout absolutely everything with his observer. So he knows about the infestation pit. He knows about the double Evo chambers. And uh, I don't think he knows about the spire yet. Where is that spire? It is coming down somewhere. Uh, oh, it's, it's in, in the... the back of the main. No, he doesn't know about it just yet. But of course, once those either corruptors or the mutants come up, I'm guessing corruptors um, for this quick broodlord army by the looks of it, the hive now coming down. So yeah, basically Colors army is going to be very, very weak for the next five, six minutes. Minutes, but as soon as that Broodlord count comes up, it's going to be very, very hard for the Protoss to deal with it. Indeed, but at the moment it looks like Drollet has very, very few intentions of moving out yet. He's macroing up, he's secured his third, and is going to start mining from it. He will use that to defend and just get up the composition that he wants. Actually, no, he is building the Warp Prism. I did miss and that, so DT that could shrine. be an Oh, sneaky. This could definitely be an indication of Drollet planning to move out soon. That warp prism usually an indication that the Protoss either wants to move out or he wants to go and harass. Like we may see him staying in his base and using this warp prism DT harass. It does look like that is going to happen. Warp prism heading off into the great blue yonder to try and find a zerg base to kill. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, uh, color does just see it skirt past that overlord. I don't know if he's seen it because it was just a tiny skim on the map. But, uh, you know, he's not going to suspect... Well, he's not going to suspect DTs, that's for sure. And yeah, um, so he's throwing down a single spore crawler, and that's that's not going to help. <laughs> that's not really going to help. No, and that's not because he's seen the warp prism either. That's just because it's, you know, good mechanics to throw down that warp prism on the right-hand side, obviously denying any sort of airplay or colossus coming in from that side. Um, he is throwing down more spine crawlers, so, you know, he's playing extra safe, but if this... Warp Prism, which you can see skirting around the outside of the map now. It is going to come into the third. There is no detection at this third right now. Absolutely. There are spine crawlers everywhere for color. He does, he does not want anything Four to DTs happen. And there we go. But the he knows are now. There. Oh, great fungal. Warp Prism as well. Everything's going to die. Warp Prism as well. Great pickup there by color. And that is shut down. Yeah, and now obviously color 
just feeling really, really good about that. He's actually spreading creep everywhere with these overlords. That fourth base is going to be denied for a good 60 seconds. Uh, we do see another warp prism now making its way across, but Color definitely knows about this one, and he is not going to be fooled again. Absolutely. Uh, Dro is beginning to get Archons with his main composition. I'm trying to work out where that one was warping in, and I can't find it. There it was. It was in the back of the third base. So he's beginning to mix them in with his main composition, which will be very good against this, um, these inf bleh, these Broodlords, which it pretty much certainly looks like Color is getting out. Yeah. He has the Great Fire Up. He's getting the upgrades. Just going to wait to see. There we go. Seven Corruptors in production. And we will see that Broodlord Infestor army begin to grow. And here we go. More harassment cancels the warp in to save the minerals. But that war prison needs to get out of there. It's not fungled anymore. Run into war prison. Now it's fungled. No escape for the war prison. It goes down. And that's a double shutdown from Droller. But Droller is... For Droller, sorry. But now Droller is moving out across the map with this force. Single Archon in the back. And he's going to be able to blow through these spine crawlers. But here are the infestors. Decent force field stopping anything getting in. But good fungal catching out a couple of those immortals. Beating their shields, which is their main strength. Archon's currently obliterating creep tombs. But here we go. Another great fungal. And... Fluid color is making it very difficult for Droller to engage, but Droller's army, not much has died yet. He's still tanked everything, and his army is still stronger at the moment. Yeah, very, very good timing. He, do he did see the Great Aspire finish, so he decided to, now is the time before these Broodlords get up. He doesn't actually have an answer to Broodlords, but he does have an answer to this large ground army of color. But the Broodlords are slowly finishing. A great fungal there holding it back, but all there is to stop this army right now is investors, but some amazing fungals. The force fields hurt him more than helping him right now. Absolutely, just trying to hold off the Lings, but the Lings are not the problem anymore. The problem is going to be those Broodlords, which are currently making their way their way in from the east. And Droll is in a fairly good position. He does have Blink, so he can just Blink under these Broodlords if he notices them. There we go, Blinking under the Broodlords. And he's going to be able to snipe almost all of these. One goes down, two goes down. Will he get the rest? The Broodlings are holding them back. There we go. Get all the Broodlings. There's one more in the back attempting to get in. Oh. But this third base is going to be gutted for color. So yeah. really good engagement here by Droller. There's so few Broodlings left. He's trying to warp in Infestors and a shoo. A bad words worth of Lings trying to kill off this huge army. Getting ready to engage. And Droller is just going to kill off this third base as well. And... It's looking very difficult for Color at the moment. Droller's army is standing strong. The spine crawlers are just being obliterated. Where are the infestors and those lings? There they are. Lings are at where the third base was. And they're going to get a couple of these stalkers out of position, but the bulk of the army is still where that third base used to be. And here we go. Lings coming up the ramp. Will there be force fields? I don't think there's any left for Droller at the moment, but at the moment it doesn't look like it matters. Archon's in the back, not where they really want to be against this kind of composition, but it doesn't matter. Great fungal there from Color. More stalkers coming in from the back, and Color does not have enough to defend this. He's lost two bases, and GG from Fluid Color. Yeah, an amazing decision there by Drawler, scouting the Great Aspire and thinking, I can't actually kill Broodlords right now. Um, especially if he gets them in number, so I'm going to have to engage. Choosing the absolute perfect time there to attack. Making that attack very, very good. Just like basically a sledgehammer. Um, it hit hard, it hit fast, and it done the damage it needed to. Absolutely. Did a really, really good job with that attack. So congratulations to GG Droller for winning our first match. And we will be back very shortly uh, with the next... Um, I don't know. Can we get an update from the show's producer as to who is playing? But until then, we shall talk a bit more about that match. And Droller did run out of force fields fairly early on there, but it really didn't seem to matter at that stage. He'd already killed so much. Yeah, it almost seemed like there was enough infestors to hold off that attack there. The amount of fungal growth he had... I think could have actually held off that attack, but for some reason they just stopped coming. Yeah, he, I think he like gave up. He went back to macroing trying to get out the units to stop it, but he really could have done, I wouldn't say a better job, but he could have paid more attention to those infestors as they were the main thing stopping that army. Because if you fungal growth the units at the front, nothing can get past those units. Exactly, and the Archons are actually at the back, so they could not get through those force fields. So... It was it was very, very tight. If Droller had attacked a minute later, he loses. 
I think, because the Broodlords would be out, the Infestors would be out, the Fungal Growths would have been a plenty. It would have been very, very hard for Drawler to win that. Absolutely great decision making there from Drawler, just seeing his window and going, oh god, I need to go now. Yeah, <laughs> and exactly. he did, and that's all he needed to do. Yeah. So it looks like the players who will be playing now are Afanzan and Piccolo. So we will be right back after the ads for this second um, best of three. Yeah, awesome. Uh, back in two minutes, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, really looking forward to this game. Um, also, if you would like to uh, get a free coaching session with myself next week on Fast Expand, then please send free replays plus your Skype name plus a little bit about yourself to fastexpand at nordrisleradio.com. That's fastexpand at nordrisleradio.com. Fast Expand on the screen right now, nordrisleradio.com on the bottom of the splashboard. So yeah, guys, put that into an email, send it over, and we'll hopefully review your replays next week. And yeah, as Chris said, quick commercial break, a little bit of music, and we'll be back for this next best of three.